Welcome to a brand new episode of Bike Fit Tuesdays. Today's episode, five tips for bigger riders. We need some help for this one. We need a big rider. You'll do, you're pretty big. How's it going? Please everybody welcome back Obi Vincent to the vlog. Today we're going to be using him uh, because we're doing five bike tips for big riders. It looks bigger next to you because you is tiny. We, we are the same height, you can't, you can't <laughs> say that. That's what you always say, you're a mouse. Is it possible for big guys to get comfortable on a bike? Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't see any reason why bigger riders can't, can't be served by cycling. I think that the, you've got to understand though that a lot of bikes are poorly designed for the end user. I mean, you consider that most high-end road bikes are designed around you know 60 kilo pro athletes you then got 110 kilo bodybuilder in front of you this is not the same morphology it's not the same uh, shape body uh, there are different needs and limitations for for someone with obese build uh, what we've done today is to uh, we've made really big gains in increasing the stars bringing the feet further apart uh, bicycles over the years have become increasingly narrower to aid in pedaling through the bottom of the stroke uh, when cornering, but uh, the reality is that most consumers don't really need that. Which brings us on to you know, what the first point of you know, considering a wider stance. You've got to look at the individual in front of you. If it's a broad individual, then quite likely to need a, a wide stance. So, and you can do that by uh, adjusting the cleats. You can do it, and we've done all three of these. You can adjust the cleat uh, to push it inboard to move the foot away from the bicycle. You can use washers, and you can also use a, a long axle pedal system. Uh, if you're a bigger rider, I would strongly encourage you to consider the, the Shimano SPD SLE, which is a, a long axle version of the Shimano's um, pedal system, mostly to get that, to get the feet further apart, get the foot underneath the knee, underneath the hip. This is probably a good point in the video to point out that we actually did a full video on Stance Whip a few weeks ago, so I'm gonna put a link down below to that if you wanna look into this further. Point number two. Fitted a, uh, a 44 centimeter handlebar to Obi's bike. On the ground is that, he's a very broad individual. If we measure Chris here, he's only 36 centimeters, I've measured him before, uh, 33 centimeters in fact. Um, so with, with Obi we found that there was a uh, quite dramatic reduction in pressure on your hands when we, when we increased the bar width, which to be honest with you is relatively uncommon and actually I have to say that uh, the amount of 44s I fitted, uh, I can count on one hand in the last four or five years. So it's it's, it's uncommon for someone to uh, to need a 44. But in this in this instance, it, it, it yielded really real improvements in uh, in the pressure on the hands. Uh, you're also a lot more comfortable on those on those hoods, right? We also, and this is the reason we've got Chris here, is to uh, give you an understanding how to measure it. So uh, we I measure across a chromium process, which is the distal part of the scapula. Uh, basically across those two points typically equals your handlebar width on the grounds that you you don't really want a handlebar that's wider than you are and uh, as I say in, in Obi's case it's actually a relatively uncommon scenario where I've gone wider on the handlebar than I have narrower um, I'm quite a big advocate of, of narrow uh, not narrow handlebars but handlebars matched to a rider's shoulder width and uh, most men I tend to find measure between 39 and 41 centimeters, which means that a 40 tends to fit most people, but you know, we're not talking about most people, we're talking about bigger individuals today. So, so yeah, we've, we've gone with a 44 centimeter bar today. What sort of difference did you notice when we put you on a 44 centimeter bar? You can imagine a smaller one I was like this. Basically, I was hanging off like that. And there's a lot of pressure on my hands, whereby with a wider one, as you can see, shoulder width, as you mentioned, and I couldn't actually reach the gears and the brakes, I was here. So it's just such a nice difference. In contrast to everything we just talked about with the stance width and the handlebar width going wider and wider and wider, uh, the complete opposite is, is happened with the saddle. So this is... Uh, this is quite fast becoming one of my favourite saddles to, to fit because you know, I, I keep introducing them to riders and they all like them. This is the new Salatalia SLR Boost. It's actually one of the more narrow saddles on the market. It's 135 millimetres and I'm riding one, you're riding one as well. Uh, I've got two of them actually now and I, I, I really rate it. And interestingly, and, and I think we have uh, big American bike manufacturers to thank for this in that um, saddle design has been inherent, seemingly driven by uh, the measuring of sit bones 
and the way that my, my understanding or at least my opinion of this is that it's really made to make the sale of saddles feel a bit more sciencey so what you do is you measure the sit bones uh, usually by sitting on some piece of apparatus in a bike shop it measures the distance between the initial tuberosities and that equals x width saddle now there's a problem with this they measure you sat like this but you don't sit on a bike like that which and what I'm coming to find is that with uh, saddles that are too wide, it tends to result in the riders need to gravitate towards the nose because they're trying to clear the width of the, uh, of the wings of the saddle. So in Obi's case, uh, actually we, we kind of gravitated towards this saddle because it's got you know, really big muscular legs. Uh, we wanted a, a saddle that had quite a low profile nose to clear, to clear its legs. I'm finding it increasingly common that we need a saddle that's actually slightly narrower than, than wider. All three of us are on the same saddle. Yeah. Same width. Yeah. That says something, doesn't it? Mm. Something that we find ourselves doing quite often with bigger riders is to uh, optimize their, their rider center of mass by taking the saddle further back. It usually needs to be done in combination with reducing the reach at the front end. Essentially what you're doing is you're moving them backwards over the bottom bracket. What it does is it uh, loads with the pelvis more and offloads the, the front of the bike more. This is the, we're talking about the ever-present force that is gravity. And uh, obviously with the bigger riders, you've got more bulk that needs to be offloaded. So again, th talking about um, how a lot of racing bikes are designed to have the saddle quite far forward to make it aero and to off, and you're, you're, they're always, they're usually ridden by riders that have very little upper body mass. We can translate that to an individual who has a lot of upper body mass. Things to consider in your morphology are the size of your head, the amount of muscle you've got, the amount of overall bulk that you have in your upper body. Well and down ladies will also need to consider this as well. Uh, I find actually you also tend to need to have uh, less handlebar drop as well to, to, to offload all of this weight. So uh, just, to, just to reiterate what we're talking about is taking the whole, the whole rider further back behind the bottom bracket. It usually needs to be carried out as a combination of take the saddle back, lower it slightly, and the same with and with the front end, bring it further back and raise it slightly. It's all about taking it from coming a little bit more like this. So you're sitting, you know, you sat a little more upright and you're loaded through the pelvis. Probably the best pedal system for most larger riders is, is going to be a Shimano SPD-SL or in this case an SPD-SLE which is a long axled version of the SPD-SL uh, on the grounds that it's, it's super stable, it's extremely durable. I think it's worth noting that Speedplay offers uh, different axle lengths, however we've come to find problems with Speedplays and bigger riders on the grounds that it just it isn't quite stable, it develops rock quite quickly. Um, and the, just the Shimano tends to be a lot more stable and a, more, and a lot more durable. Uh, it's worth noting the look will also work relatively well. Again, it doesn't really have quite the same level of stability as the Shimano does. Uh, it does have uh, the facility to run more washers behind it, uh, but there is no long axle version in, in looks range, unfortunately. So my preference would definitely be Shimano SPDSA, which is what we've got here. Let's explain it. Actually, the perfect example is, you know when you have your shoes on, you have a, there's a pebble in your shoe, and you're just walking around, walking around, it's annoying you, and after a while, you take your shoes off, take it, it falls out, you put your shoes back, and it feels really comfortable. Exactly what, that's probably the best way I can explain it. So being on the bike was just, it was fine, but there was always something not right. And now coming on here, and having all these adjustments, and it just feels, like, wow, okay, I didn't have to be slightly uncomfortable. It wasn't, it wasn't that, oh, you need to kind of embrace the suck, as they always say. It, so when I do like CrossFit workouts, it's like, yeah, it's supposed to feel uncomfortable, but like James said, it, it shouldn't. Like, you should still feel comfort. Um, yes, you're doing 50K, yes, you're trying to go for speed, but it shouldn't feel, there's a difference, right? There's a difference with something not quite right with pain and when you're putting effort into your bike rides. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's just nice to finally be able to know that 
when I do get a new bike, it should feel like this. Look forward to seeing this position out on the road, because we've got to do a ride together, haven't we? Yes, we yeah. Should do it. You said 100k. What did I say, 100 miles? Oh, was it 100 miles? <laughs> That marks the end of today's episode of Bike Fit Tuesdays. I'm gonna put a link down below to James's shop and Obi's channel. If you have any questions, please put them in the comment section down below and me and James will do our best to answer them. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys soon.